G'day, John for the Hot End. We're going back to basics, how to level your bed. Now, as you can see, there is a number of steps to leveling your bed. The first one is you must make sure that your X axis is parallel to your bed mounting system. Now on this printer you can see it has two lead screws that lift the bed, one on each side. Originally it had two motors, now it only has one in the upgrade. When it had two motors each one could move independently and with the one motor they are locked together so there's none of this going out of level because the two lead screws are locked together by the belt. So the first thing to do is to get a good reliable measuring system like a ruler and measure up to your X. Now on this one the X is fixed and it's the, the bed assembly that can go out of level. So we're just checking that now and measuring up from the, the base plate of the bed to the X axis. Now it's important that you're measuring from the base plate, not the bed, because we're going to be adjusting the bed. You measure from the base plate up and make sure it's straight both sides. On this type of printer, it can either have one or two lead screws. This one has one, and you're relying on the right-hand side of the X to be nice and tight so that it remains horizontal. If it's two lead screws, you have the same problems as with the other printer in that it can go out of level. And in this case, you measure up from the body of the printer because it's the x-axis itself that can go out of level. So you go from the body of the printer, not the bread, not bread, bed. Right, here we go. The steps for leveling the bed. First step, turn on the printer. Often overlooked. The best way to level your bed is with it in printing mode so you need to preheat both the nozzle and the bed. In this case we're just using PLA temperatures and that should be fine. And jumping forward we're up to temperature. And the next step is to move the X gantry up, which is actually moving your Z axis up, up and out of the way. There we go, the X gantry is rising up on the Z lead screws. Now I'm using a GTEC printer here, but the same applies to basically any printer in this sort of format. Next step, we need to wind down the adjustment knobs on the bed so that the bed springs are compressed. Now, the best way to do this is two at a time, i.e. the front two or the back two both at once. That way you can avoid any possibility of warping your bed when it's going down and we're, we're dragging it down as far as we can go. Now we'll do the back ones.
nice and tight and down firm. Moving on, we need to home the printer. Now, if this is the first time you've done this on a new printer, have your hand on the on-off switch just in case your Z limit switch is in the wrong position and you can crash the nozzle into the bed. So just keep an eye on that as you do your auto home. Once you've done it once, there's no problem with that. On the left there, you can see the Z switch and you can see that the nozzle is well clear of the build plate. Next thing to do we need to either in this case either disable the steppers which allows you to move the axes by hand as you will see here we can move the bed and we can move the hot end assembly by hand well this printer has a leveling feature which will move these things for you to do each corner so we start in the Oh, it doesn't matter which corner you start in, but we're starting on this corner and we're going to do the infamous or famous paper trick. You put your piece of paper between the nozzle and the heated bed and adjust the levelling knob until you can get that paper just grabbing between the two. So we don't want it tight so that you can't move the paper and we don't want it too loose. You can get it so it just moves. So you can see that it's moving quite freely. Doesn't take a lot of adjustment on these knobs to move it. So it's quite fine and that's going in nice and cleanly. And this is the auto function I spoke about. It's now going over to the other corner and we do the same over here. Put our paper between, adjust the knob until we get a, a just feel. You, when you do it, you will know exactly what I mean. You can, you can just feel a slight drag on the paper when you're moving it in and out. As you can see, I'm not moving that knob very much at all. Because we're talking about first layers that are, well, anything down to 50 microns. So you've got to be fairly accurate with this. It's a, um, often overlooked part of printing is leveling the bed. So now we move down to the back ones and we do the back one. Then we move across and do the other side. Now, I would do this on your printer even if it had an auto bed levelling system. I still do a manual level first. Right, we've done the back one. Now we go back to where we started at the front and we do the whole process again, all four corners. Some people like to do it even a third time just to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. Now we start on a test print. There's a heap of test prints on Thingiverse, just find one. And you want one that prints a large surface. They're the settings that I use in Simplify 3D for my first layer. They are arguably the best. And this is a little picture of Wikipedia of what we're looking for. So away we go and it's always a good idea to do this at a very slow speed so that you can see what's going on and you can continually adjust those leveling knobs while it's printing to get a nice even first layer.
As you can see, there are spots on this that are different colors, different intensities of, of the white. That's where it's either too close or where I've been adjusting the leveling knob as it's been printing. And now it's gone onto the second layer. So hopefully all your good work has paid off and your second layer goes down nicely. Now this is a close-up. You'll see both of these are too close to the bed. The one on the left more so than the one on the right, but they're, they're squished way too flat. And that's what it looks like from the side, and that's, that's way too thin. You can end up with nozzle clogs and scratching your bed surface and all sorts of things by doing this. So you need to be more like this. The one on the right is the squished, and the one on the left is getting pretty close to perfect. That's what we're looking for, an undistorted, perfect line. And there it is there, absolutely perfect, beautiful. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be how to make it stick.